2.2s, 2.4s, maximum of 2.6, 3.0 actually, one or two in there. But this is where the big guns lie. Fireworks time. Two rounds of required first though. But they're important, mess up your required. Oh, you yeah. Leave yourself Every a lot dive. of work to do to drag yourself back in. Look, there's a Chris just climbing up the pool, getting himself a bit of a dunk. Why do they jump in, Neil? Yeah, it's just nice. So when you're training, you're constantly uh, in and out of the water a lot, so you never quite get completely dry. So it feels a little alien if you're standing on the board bone dry. You need to be a little bit moist, and that makes you uh, feel more comfortable before you. Oh, okay, right, well, I'm not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be announced tonight. The boys weren't ready. They needed a quick dunk before they came in. They are the Olympic champions after all. Jack Law and Chris Mears, defending Commonwealth champions, reigning Olympic champions, of course, that historic gold medal for Great Britain in Rio a couple of years ago. And here they are, out to defend ready? their title. One, two, three. Back dive three, to open. Beautiful from start to finish. Execution from both Jack and Chris was spot on. In and out of the pike shape, in unison, moving their arms identically, identically. And so synchro should be eight and a half and nines. I think Jack's dive wasn't quite as good as Chris's, was it? Of the execution, headphones straight on. It's of course a music producer. Yeah, look at those 8.5s to synchronization. Solid start then for the defending champions. But listen to the ball going up for the Aussies. Dominic Bedgood, who won bronze in the 10 meter synchro earlier on today. What a busy day it is for him. And his new partner, Matthew Carter, just 17. But showing Ready? loads yeah. of promise. There's Dom. Back dive as well for the Aussies. <laughs> Yeah, that's equally as good as the English boys who have just completed the very same dive. Carter closest to us. Great job in the individual. Bedgood's a platform specialist, but he knows his way around a springboard as well. And I think the Aussies are being the lead, actually. Their synchronization was just fractionally better. Is. Yeah, they are. They get the nines for synchronization, but looking down the lists, Jack and Chris have some really big dives to come. The Aussies don't quite have the firepower level degrees of difficulty. Yeah, big dives can sometimes mean big mistakes, so let's keep a lid on it. <laughs> I can't. I know. Philippe Gagné and Francois Imbaudelac. These two were the silent assassins, weren't they? <laughs> well, Philippe was, yeah. Uh, the three meter oh, yesterday. In dive in the pike position. As I mentioned, all dives carry a fixed degree of difficulty in the first two rounds of 2.0. So you're seeing like for like. It's beautiful, actually. The replays which the judges don't get to see, we get to analyse. So there is a difference in the distance from the diving board, which means the synchro marks shouldn't be as favourable. That's why they come away with eights. Oh, eight halves and synchro. So if they were in line, they would have been enjoying nines as well. Yeah, those eagle eye judges spotting that. Here are our first pair from Malaysia. Two Malaysian teams, two English teams, two Australian teams, a New Zealand and a Canadian team in the mix this evening. Pute and Dime. Dime just 16 years old. They do. In would dive oh. for their first required. And it's a solid opening round dive for Diam and Pute. Same height from the diving board. Different distances. A child's bike through the gap between them, so it's not a huge gap. Synchronize Asian judges, yeah, eight, that's correct, in my opinion. They would need to be perfectly aligned for nines. Right, the young New Zealanders, Anton Down Jenkins and Liam Stone. 
One, two, so I've just finished three, school in Wellington. Four, dive. Nice from Team NZ. I don't expect them to be able to keep up when this competition gets going. I will flag that now. By way of synchronization required, that's Bob on. in there for synchronisation. So a really good start for the young New Zealanders. And here are England team two, Jack and Ross Haslam, the brothers. They've been looking forward to this moment, competing One, two, side by three, side at the Commonwealth Games. One and a half somersaults, Pike. Nice, really nice, Team Sheffield. Jack and Ross. Here they are teaming up. A bit head to head in the one meter and the three meter. Younger brother getting the best of the party, and here they are joining forces. Beautiful synchro. Should get nines on synchro. If it doesn't, judges need to put their glasses on. No, fine. Fully focused. Fully focused. Tuned in. That's really good for Jack and Ross. Second danger pair. Curtis Matthews hold it together. James Connor, we know, exceptional diver. Yeah, James Connor already, of course. Different height differential, look at that cat. James Connor towering above. It'll be interesting to see how their styles match up because James Connor so really took his yeah. time, didn't he? Yeah. The individual. One, two, three, three, three. as neat and tidy or as synchronized as we've seen from some of the other pairs. Curtis further away from the diving board. Drive a bike through the gap. So lower marks on synchro. This is still high quality diving, high quality, <laughs> high quality diving. He slipped across the other side of the world there. It is. High quality diving, but yeah, those synchronization marks reflecting that gap that appeared between the distances from the diving board. And the final pairing then for this first round of the men's three metre synchro springboard, Chu Yi Wei and Wei Tse Liang. Medals galore between these two, but it's not been their game so far. Finishing in 10th and 11th Up. in the three metre final. Wei was oh. the defending champion. Yeah, they certainly know their way around the back dive fight. Beautifully orchestrated. In and out of the pipe shape at the same time. Oh, that's spot on, isn't it? Nines on synchro, gotta be way over 50 points. Yes, yeah. it is. 52.20, and that moves them up into second place. It's all sticky though, isn't it? It is all very tight after this opening round. Let's have a look. Dom Bedgood and Matthew Carter, the Australians out in front with, look, Jack Haslam and Ross Haslam in front of Jack Law and Chris Mears for now. They're in the medal positions rather than the defending champions. It's OK, don't get too excited, Kat. It's just required. It's all right. <laughs> it's worth pointing out. It is. That Jack and Ross perform better than the hot favourites. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's only required. You only get about 50 points if it's good. It's big. It's all big. All six are big. Come on, Leon, it matters. Uh, it does. Uh, yes. Come with me here. It always matters. I'll, I'll save my enthusiasm for about three onwards. Okay. Jack Law and Chris Mears then. Currently down in fourth. Ready? Reverse yeah. dive in pike. One, two, Their final three, required go. of this final. So, you can't win it on the requires, but you can certainly lose it. So that was 
alluding to. That's good. Synchronization through and through. Eight and a half, so I would say. Maybe even a cheeky nine. There we go. Tom, Adam, and Mark. All three England coaches on the deck, capturing the action and giving the boys the feedback. There we go. Yeah, nine in there for synchronization, 8.5s. Tidy work from the defending champions in the required rounds. And here are our current leaders. A huge whoop for Dominic Bedgood. He uh, is a Southport boy, born and bred. One, two, we are in three, Southport yeah. right now. Their final required dive, reverse in Pike. Not quite as good as their opening round dive, and pretty much like for like with Jack and Chris, who just performed the very same dive, reverse dive in the piked position. So Matthew Carter, fractionally further away from the diving board than Bedgood. So am I correct? Slightly less? Yeah, 49.8. On the money. Maybe I should do this job. Or just keep your current one. Yeah. <laughs> so the Canadians, Philippe Gagné and Francois Imbaud-Delac. Gagné winning the silver in the men's three meter yesterday. Imbaud-Delac has world bronze in the mixed synchro, so they're pretty handy off this three meter board. Andy. That is well executed from both divers. Steady, solid synchro. Steady, solid synchro. Ain't gonna win any medals though in this final, is it? Well, in the required, I think it's good enough. Let's wait and see what they've got when the fireworks come out in the latter rounds. <laughs> okay, now you're talking. Reverse dive for the first of the Malaysian teams, Daim and Pute. For their final required. Sixth for now. Right, that's the first mistake we can clearly see, really, from any of these partnerships. Diane has ended up right on the, well, he ended up jumping backwards as he reached the end of the diving board, which then catapulted him forwards, further away from the board. He wins the race to the water ahead of Pute, his partner in crime and on the diving board. And you can see there, Sevens for synchro only. Yeah, he's still, still away then. Still good, but comparable. <laughs> Slightly behind the rest of the field. Anton Dan Jenkins and Liam Stone for New Zealand. One, two, three, go. Yeah, nice again from Team NZ. When the competition gets going, these boys will be left behind, but at the moment, they're keeping up with the front runners and riders. Good all the way through. Those synchro scores coming up on the screen. Nice. Low degree of difficulty for the rest of their programme. Yes, when we get into the optionals, yeah. Right, Jack and Ross right. in silver medal position after just one dive. I'm not going too early, but it was a very promising start. Stop mentioning the medals then. For the brothers. Back Ready. dive, yeah. 2.0 degree of difficulty. One, two, three, go. Lovely, lovely. Right. So remarkable. Just mirror image of each other. If anything, Jack left of screen is just a smidge 
further away from the diving board, but that should get nine to get on synchro. And uh, you see these boys at the top of the pile. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant. After the yes. opening two rounds. Yes. Required dives. James Connor and Curtis Matthews for Australia. And, uh, the mutterings around the commentary boxes up here was that these two may be ones to watch for a medal. Inward one and a half somersaults in Pike. Ready, Their final required one, at 2.0 degree of difficulty. Yeah, that's really nice, isn't it? Even with that height differential. Still managed to get the same elevation from the springboard into the water at the same time, same distance. Vertical entry, little bit of splash being thrown up. And that's a better effort from Oz pair number two, Connor and Matthews. 8.5s, just under the 50 mark point there. These required dives looking to push over 50 mm -hmm. for the best pairs. Chu okay. Yiwei and Wei Tzu Liang oh. of Malaysia then to round off this second group of dives. Yeah, nice from Chu and Wei. So yeah. All good. Chu just tipping over. So he'll only get sevens. Oh, he could only get sevens on the execution of his dive. Organization's good. He'll get away with an eight. This, oh, the bugs are landing here as well. Look at this. Hello, Moth. Just landing on me while I'm commentating. Dominic Bedgood and Matthew Carter then tied for the lead after the second round with Jack Haslam and Ross Haslam of England. Jack Law, Chris Spears down in fourth after the required dives, but look at that at his title top, just a couple of points in it. Even between one, two, three, four, five, six, everyone's in the mix. There you go, as predicted. Nothing to play for. Now the competition really begins. This is this is can really begin to flex their muscles, show what they're made of, cranking up the degree of difficulty of the dives, designing their own programs, so they're best positioned to win the medals. So Jack Law and Chris Mears for England with a forward two and a half somersaults, two twists in Pike, 3.4 degree of difficulty. I'll get up to 3.9 before the day Ready? is done. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Yeah, straight up and down. Forward two and a half somersaults, two twists, 3.4 degree of difficulty. Spin speeds are together, twist is together, repikes together. If anything, ever so slightly, Chris Mears just a smidge further away from the diving board. But this should get eights plus on synchro. And it's a huge DD, 81. 81. There's the marker. Excellent. 8.5 in there as well as the boys disappear into that uh, backstage holding area. The VIP room. Dominic Bedgood and Matthew Carter then the current leaders after the required dives but this just 3.0 degree Easily. of difficulty inward two and a half somersaults in Ready? pike yeah. so lower degree of difficulty it needed to be really really good in order to keep up with the pace, the early pace of Jack and Chris. It's well executed, but they will be left short of points. So Jack and Chris got 81, 10 points less for the first of the Aussie pairs. It's still okay. Philippe Gagné and Francois Imbaud de Lac for Canada with a 3.1 degree of difficulty. Right. Forward three and a half somersaults Five, two, four, in Pike. No, 
Oh, that's very good as well. That's yeah, a great effort. Being optional to die for our Canadian pair. Spin speeds end up pretty much the same. Philippe, who's left of screen, touch ahead distance wise of his partner. But that's good because uh, you can tell by the reaction of the coaches that they're pleased because it doesn't normally go as well as that. And 74. Nice. Yep, and the Canadians up into the bronze medal position in these early stages. <laughs> Daim and Pute off the pace, even after the required. And this 3.0 degree of difficulty inward two and a half somersaults in Pike. For the young Malaysians. Different distances from the diving board. Slightly different spin speeds. It choose a little close to that diving board. Yeah, so both divers rolling in a little bit low to the water. Still a very good dive. Won't get over 70 points. It's pretty close to you though, doesn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. 69.30 and 8 in there for synchronization. Couple of 7.5s. Down Jenkins and Liam Stone for New Zealand. Anton Down Jenkins only really started taking his diving seriously after Ready? watching Liam Stone at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. One, two, three, go. Back two and a half somersaults. 3.0 degree of difficulty. Oh dear. Well, you know, I did mention that these guys were going to maybe slip behind as we start to move into the optionals. That secret is actually pretty good though, isn't it? But this is the execution that you're noticing. Both divers not quite nailing their dives, both a little short of vertical going in, particularly Anton. He only comes yes. away with a five. Do you see that on the right-hand side of the execution There are his scores on the right. They are. Let's go Team Sheffield. Jack and Ross Haslam, the brothers, currently in first place after the required dives. Inward two and a half somersaults in Pike for Jack and Ross. So low degree of difficulty. This needs to be good if they're going to keep up. Center there clapping with all his might, and so he should. Yes, brothers from Sheffield. Yeah, nines on synchro, gotta be. Oh, brilliant! Look at those faces. So, here we go 77. That's a, oh, that's a stonking score on a 3.0. And a nine in there for synchronization as well, two 8.5s. Really well done, those Haslam boys. Really well done. James Connor and Curtis Matthews for Australia. James with two medals already. One. 3.1 degree three. difficulty forward, yeah. three and a half somersaults. Well, that was much better than I thought it was going to be. James Connor was almost like a. Gorilla walking with his feet in the uh, individual event. Whether Curtis would want to walk that slowly. Got it together, haven't they? So Curtis, because he's smaller, spins a bit quicker. So it's slight differential there on the spin speeds. And that's good enough, right? Both times executed. Bang. Bag full of eights. Well, look at you. Yeah, eights everywhere. Eights everywhere. <laughs> We'll leave the summary at that. There is an 8.5 or two of them snuck in there too. And here are our early yeah. bronze medalists, Chu Yi Wei and Wei Zi Liang of Malaysia. 3.1 degree of difficulty forward, three and a half somersaults in Pike. Oh, that was really nice too. 
That is spectacular. Wow, we've got a competition on our hands. Do not leave the room that you're watching this in or put the device down that you might be watching it from. This is exciting diving. Ah, it's only going to get better. Wow. <laughs> Going. It's going to keep going. That's the only guarantee I'm going to make. Who knows where it's going to go, but this is high quality. 79.05. So the standings then at the midway point after round three. Jack, Law and Chris Mears, but look, just a couple of points ahead of Chu and we of Malaysia. And then Jack Haslam and Ross Haslam, also of Team England. Three points behind the leaders. This is very tight for the medals. Dominic Beckfield and Matthew Carter as well could make a play and push in there too. And the Canadians as well do not like them. So Jack and Chris, the Olympic champions, out in front, but only just two points in it at the halfway stage. This a 3.4 degree difficulty, inward three and a half somersaults in tuck for the defending Commonwealth champions, the reigning Ready? Olympic yeah. champions. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Yeah, it's good enough. Stunning work from both these athletes. They've had a heck of a run in this year. Wow. Jack, well, in fact, his dive wasn't quite as good from an execution point of view as Chris's. They're going to get eights on synchro, and that will carry them nicely. 3.4 degree of difficulty. A bit of light for light coming up. Yeah, seven and a half and eights, 77.52. It'll be useful, not the best they can do. Same dive. Same dive from the Aussies then, and inward three and a half somersaults in tuck. A very new pairing. Dominic Bedgood has compared this pairing to a wild beast, sometimes Ready? tamed sometimes out of control. Well, the beast is loose there then because that isn't quite up to standard. Takeoff is okay. Dive is slow and low on the water. Bit of a scramble. So execution shouldn't really get more than a six on execution. I mean, the secret is okay because they both struggled on the dive. I think it's fair. Not as good as the English pair. Philippe Gagné and Francois Hubert de Lac just drifting out into fifth, Hi. but uh, still in Hi. contention. Hi. Reverse three and a half somersaults in tuck, 3.5 degree of difficulty for the Canadians. Oh my word, I was not expecting that. That's astonishing. Where did that come from? Team Canada coming into this competition with an absolutely spectacular reverse three and a half in the top position. Where did that come from? Wow. It's just what they did in the individual, particularly Philip Gagné, just did, yeah. sneaking in there under the radar. Wow, well, that isn't under the radar, that is explicitly, hello, we are here, back into the VIP room, leaving the 81 points behind. Boom. Absolute peach. And uh, Daim and Pute of uh, Malaysia, second from bottom in the standings. Oh. Forward three and a half somersaults, 3.1 degree of difficulty. Struggling a little bit there. I am and Ute. Clattering into the end of the diving board, not really using it. Certainly playing closest to us. Wins the race to the water. Bit of a scramble on the bottom. Not much drop time. It's still a very passable dive. It's going to get sevens for both execution and synchronization. After watching the Canadians come in with something a bit more special, to let that one go as mediocre. 
Anton Down Jenkins and Liam Stone, the young New Zealanders. Inward two and a half somersaults, 3.0 degree of difficulty. They don't have One, many big two, dives in the three, bag, these yeah. two. Well, you teed it up there, Kat, quite nicely. Liam, who was closest to us as our previous view, still is here, just skipping backwards, not getting anywhere near enough height, and he has a race to the water with his hands and his feet. His hands got there first, landing a wedge. It wasn't far away, was it? Anton, and jumping in. So you can see there the execution mark for Liam was only four as opposed to his partner was six and a half. Jack and Ross Haslam then currently in the bronze medal position, but it is very tight between the top five teams. Reverse two and a half somersaults in yeah. the pike, just 3.0 degree difficulty. So once again, precision required. Ah, yes, precision it is. Come on, boys. Slotting them in. Dive after dive. I didn't hold my breath. They looked to come into the end of the board at marginally different times there. Jack a little bit ahead of Ross. Jack, of course, closest to us. Both of them drifting over ever so slightly on the entry. That's a cool angle, isn't it? You see that coaches as they reach up and applaud over the shot, sh shoulder of the coach shot. That one. Look at that eight and a half on synchro. Yep, and 72.90. That'll keep them in that uh, third medal position for now. Bronze medal. That third medal. James Connor and Curtis Matthews in sixth. Ready? Yep. The 3.4 forward three, two and a half somersaults, yep. two twists. Well, there you go. You take this one then, Cap. Ooh, I think that's what you need to know. Move it to the untrained eye. That was out of sync. Ouch. Well, I wasn't referring to you. I was just saying that. <laughs> Those of us that aren't used to watching diving can see hitting the water at different distances from the diving board. You can drive a minibus through that gap. Yeah, all a little bit of a hodgepodge. And there were big hopes for this pair. James Connor already with uh, two medals, a silver and a bronze at this Games, but uh, that will leave them with work to do. Asia, these are the silent assassins in this event, Cap. They've got plenty of experience between them. 22, 24 years old, major medals on both sides. Reverse two and a half somersaults, one and a half twists, 3.3 degree of difficulty, and they're currently in silver. Well, bit of a mix up going on there, certainly on the takeoff, which meant that it all went a little bit south by way of timing. The execution of both dives, both divers is okay. Chu landing way back from the end, skipping off ahead of Wee, hitting the water at different times. Fit a truck, a garbage truck through the gap, it's a huge gap in the difference in distance from the diving board. So synchronization, there you go, well done judges. Five and a half is correct, in fact judge number two on the synchronization awarded it four and a half, which doesn't count, but I agree with judge number two. So Jack Law and Chris Mears just beginning to assert their authority on this three-metre synchro final. Five points now ahead of the Canadians in the silver medal position. And Jack Haslam and Ross Haslam, though, just two points off that silver medal. They're currently in bronze. Dominic Bengood and Matthew Carson. Jack Law and Chris Mears turn the screw on the rest of the field. It is the world's hardest dive. Forward two and a half somersaults, three twists, 3.9 degree of difficulty for the defending Ready? champions. Yeah. One, two, three, go. The screws have been turned on the rest of the field. That was just what we like to see. It's certainly very, very 
pleasing to see these boys coming back after a heck of a year. Injuries, setbacks, lost coaches you know, in the not too distant future. Oh! From the coaching team there, Adam, Mark, Tom holding the tablet, capturing the action. This is going to be massive. The scoreboard's had a meltdown. The scores are that big. It's going to be huge. Look at that, 92.43. Wow. There we go. 8.5s for synchronisation. I'd have thought we'd have been pushing up for the nines with that. From this angle, they look like one diver. Brilliant stuff. And that has given them an absolutely humongous lead. Well, everyone's still to dive. <laughs> I know. Forward three and a half somersaults in One, Pike. 3.1 degree of difficulty yeah. for the Australian pairing in fourth. I mean, that's really, really good from the Aussies, but they're just, it's kind of bringing a water pistol, isn't it, along? They just haven't got the firepower. 3.1, it's a beautifully executed dive. That'll get a nice for Synchro for sure. And it deserves it. I mean, they may even get close to 80 points, which is a supersonic score for a 3.1. They just can't keep up with the 90s. Can't oh, they do as well. Wow. Well done. Not bad for a 3.1. No, it's, cool. it's, it's much better than not bad, isn't it? Oh, Canada. Oh, hang on. This could be quite good as well. 3.5 degree of difficulty, reverse one and a half somersaults, three and a half twists for the Canadians in silver. Oh, yeah, so gathered up. Wow, that's awesome, isn't it? My goodness. One and a half somersaults, three and a half twists. Look at that. Another surprisingly brilliant dive from Team Canada. They've been all over the show in training. And they're obviously on the hustle because they are, they are. They are on the money. Yeah. Eight on synchro. It's the execution that let them down a little bit there. Can you see? Only sevens on execution with those helicopter feet. Yeah. Legs flying everywhere. Daim and Pute out of the running for Malaysia. Yeah. Forward two and a half somersaults, one twist in pike, just 3.0 on the difficulty scale. Yeah, it's tidy though, isn't it? Low DD, degree of difficulty, 3.0. Just not quite. Sorry, yeah, I'm not quite keeping up. The height Pute is able to generate. See the differential height distance on the board. Anton Down Jenkins and Liam Stone for Team New Zealand. With another low degree of difficulty dive for this final. Forward two and a half somersaults, one twist. One, two, it's the same dive we've just seen from the Malaysians. Oh, that's the best dive for a long shot, isn't it, from Team New Zealand? So they were faltering on their previous dive, an inward two and a half, this one, for two and a half, one twist. He's bang on the money. Really showing the best of what they can do here this evening. The, the floodlights here on the Gold Coast. Amongst a the crowd, staying up late to enjoy this close and exciting competition. Back up to Team England then, and Jack and Ross Haslam currently in the bronze medal position. There's been some stonking diving from them. 
3.4 degree of difficulty there, ratcheting up that complexity now yeah. with a forward two and a half One, somersaults, two, two three, twists three, in yeah. pike. It's good, it's definitely good from Ross. I knew Jack's been having a little bit of trouble with this. It tends to just roll into the water, and that's exactly what happened. So Jack is closest to us. Synchronization is well, it's the first one they've done where they're ever so slightly off. And you can see Jack, who's furthest away from us for, on this screenshot, rolling into the water. So when the execution marks come up on the left-hand side of the screen, you will see Jack's scores, which are lower. So six for Jack, seven for Ross, and then sevens for the synchro. They will slip away with that one. That could prove to be critical. Yeah, there were only a few points in it as well to see them drop out of the medal places. That's what's happened for now. One lot of dives left to go after this one, of course. James Connor and Curtis Matthews. There were such high hopes for this pairing coming into this final. They're down in six, reversed three and a half somersaults in yep. tuck, 3.5 degree of difficulty. One, two, Their toughest three. dive. Yeah. Yeah, lots going on. They've done okay, but there is a huge difference in the distance from the diving board. Curtis shooting forwards much, much further. James Connor, huge gap. Letting them down, a little bit soft in their lower backs on the entries, both divers, so it's high risk and it hasn't come off for them. So I'm sure the Haslam brothers will be breathing a sigh of relief. So Chu Yiwei and Wei Ziliang to wrap up this penultimate round of the men's three meter synchro springboard final. Still not out of medal contention, these two. And a 3.4 degree of difficulty inward, three and a half somersaults oh. in tuck. Could be very useful indeed if it goes well. Yes, it goes well for them. Superb synchro, phenomenal diving from the last pair in this final. Identical spin speeds and identical slightly over entries into the water. So eight and a half, definitely on synchro. Execution will be lower because of the rollover of both of them over vertical. Six, seven, uh, I thought it was a little bit of one judge agrees with me, eight and a half for synchro. I mean, I'm happy for it to be lower because I'm supporting the home nations, of course. And the home nations doing pretty well. Good reading for Team England. Jack Law and Chris Mears, as expected, out in front. 18 points their lead at the moment over the Canadians. Dominic Bedford and Matthew Carter of Australia in bronze, but just eight points behind them. Jack Haslam and Ross Haslam for Team England, the brothers from Sheffield. It's been a roller coaster of a couple of years for Jack Law and Chris Mears since winning that Olympic title in Rio two years ago. But it's a 3.8 degree of difficulty, forward four and a half somersaults for the defending champions, the Olympic champions, back to back golds at the Commonwealth Games after a whopper of a dive in the penultimate round. One, two, three, go. Good enough. Crispy is just letting the dive roll over ever so slightly. But that is a top notch effort. Six dives on the money. Synchronization spot on. You can just see Chris having to save the dive there. He did land on the corner of the board. I am so impressed with these boys. Very proud of them coming out here. There you go, Adam Smallwood. Punching the air in delight. So even though Chris Mears' execution, which you will see here right of screen, go to 5.583, that's out of reach. That's gold. Oh, no. <laughs> Best mates, housemates, dive partners. Come on, my champions again. The celebration starts early. There's still a whole list of other competitors to go. 
but with a whopping 436 points. There's no catching Jack and Chris. Dominic Bedgood One, two, three, and Matthew three, Carter go. currently in bronze medal position. So their fight for a medal begins. Yeah, they've laid it all out there. I think these two deserve a medal. I must admit they've been great all the way through. So 3.4 degree of difficulty. Yeah, same distance from the diving board. Get it around quite nicely. Just see they were quite in unison, were they, as they were in spinning and twisting. So let's have a look. Here are the marks. Oh, wait. The, will that be enough for a medal? Let's have a look. challenges to Jack and Chris throughout this competition in the silver medal position four and two and a half somersaults two twists in pike 3.4 degree of difficulty for another Five, Canadian two, medal four, four. well I think, I think that's going to be good enough for a medal for sure Canada coming almost out of nowhere when you're watching them in training i was thinking well they don't look as though they're on form but they have just had the meat of their life i'm delighted for them to be able to be so consistent this competition has been absolutely brilliant and they have played their part and they will be on the podium or oh, just above the Aussies, 4.15, 4 Plays 4.08, so the Canadians in silver medal position. The Australians cannot catch them. But the Malaysians might be able to. Daim and Pute, the less experienced Malaysians, 16 and 22 with Chu and we to dive last. We're finishing with a back two and a half somersaults in Pike, just 3.0 degree oh. of difficulty for the youngsters. Ready? Go. Yeah, finishing off in style. Yeah, I'm just 16 years old. Trying to step up and keep up with Pute. It's not quite strong enough yet. You can see most of his dives, he's hit the water fractionally before his partner. Still, a good showing. New Zealand will finish their campaign next. The scores are confirmed for Graham and Pute. Here they are. Yeah, and uh, it's been a much better showing for Anton and Liam together as a pairing than it did individually in the three metre. Forward two and a half somersaults, two twists in Pike, 3.4 degree difficulty One, two, to round off their three, Commonwealth go. Games. Oh, well, that was the uh, most difficult and complex dive that they fielded today. And uh, it was a bit of a mix up, a little bit here and there. Confusion, maybe. Different distances. Yeah, look. Wishy washy. Yeah, wishy washy sixes. Yeah, this isn't just a good calculator, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> what to do. Well, goodness, these last three teams are all in a shot. I think well, Connor and Matthews are out of it, aren't they? But by my maths, Ooh. Jack Haslam and Ross Haslam need 86. Which is yeah, that's a monster with a reverse one and a half somersaults, yeah. three and a half twists. Yeah. 3.5 degree of difficulty. 
needs to be their best one ever. but that will not be good enough for a medal. What an absolute shame that he will be just outside the medals in fourth. They've given it their absolute all. Yeah, you can see on this occasion, Ross a little further away from the diving board, so their synchronization, that's the first one that they haven't been bang on the money on. <laughs> Jack and Chris like yeah, it. Yeah, cheering on their teammates, of course, that's what teammates are for 395 yeah they're short of the medals mm -hmm. and it's another fourth place finish then for poor old ross <laughs> he was so well done. close to well a medal. boys well done so close to a medal in the three meter yesterday just six points away from the podium james connor and curtis matthews finishing with an inward three and a half somersaults in tuck 3.4 degree of difficulty Ready? Yep. Too far behind for a medal. One, two, three, go. Yep, finishing off. A little bit off the pace when the competition started to heat up. They just couldn't stay in the kitchen. Yeah, different spin speeds. One pair left to go. One pair left to go in this final. She's been a bit of a victory parade for Jack Law and Chris Mears since the optional dives got underway. But these guys could still snatch a medal. They need 90, so they need an absolute whopper of a dive with this forward two and a half somersaults, two twists for Chu Yi Wei and Wei Tzu Yang. 3.4 degrees of difficulty. It's gonna be a big, big ask. Oh, it's very good. It's not 90 points good though. So Malaysia will finish outside the medals. We will wait for the final scores to come up, but it is confirmed that Jack and Chris are, have successfully defended their Commonwealth Games title four years ago in Glasgow. Here they are again. Cut above the rest. That is job done. There's Team England. They just picked the Aston Brothers, though, Team Malaysia. They did. So it's smiles and relief for Jack Law and Chris Mears. Triple. Jack, triple. He's done it. He's got the hat trick. <laughs> triple Jack. And an easy way to win it, really. Right, These are the standings. Jack Law and Chris Mears. Look at that. 21 points ahead of the rest of the field. Philippe Gagné and Francois Imbaudelac take the silver. Dominic Bedford, a second medal of the day for the Australian teaming up with Matthew Carter to take the bronze. Jack Haslam and Ross Haslam just pushed down with those final two dives into fifth. But Jack Law and Chris Mears, the Olympic champions, now back-to-back -back Commonwealth champions. There's Yona Knight Wisdom of Jamaica congratulating his training mates. He was born and raised in Leeds, trains there with Jack and Chris, and Lois and the gang. It's been such a brilliant day.